Okay, in this section of the class we're going to learn how to solve equations of the form x squared equals c. And you'll see what I mean by that uh, as I write it on the board. Equations of the form x squared equals c. Uh, we haven't actually solved too many equations of this type um, before, so we're going to go ahead and solve that now. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If we have, for instance, an equation that looks like x squared minus 9 equals 0, how would I solve that? Well, I, I could move the 9 over here, and in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do first. x squared equal, I'm going to move the 9 over by adding 9 to both sides. So I'm going to do that. 9 over here, uh, if you add it to this side, 0 plus 9 gives me 9. So that's why I've got that. And then, of course, I've already told you in a previous lecture, the opposite of a square is a square root. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. If I were to, you know, do a square root here, you would see that it would just cancel with the square, so I'm left with x. Opposite of a square is a square root. Equals, I've got to do it to the right-hand side, so square root of 9. So then, that means x is equal to 3. But don't forget that it's not just 3, it's plus or minus 3. I'm going to write that a little bit bigger so you can see that. x will equal plus or minus 3. 3. Any time in math when you're solving an equation that's like x squared equals something, remember our general form is x squared equals c, when you solve for x by taking a square root to get rid of this square and put it over here, you go ahead and take the square root just like you usually do, but you have to put a plus minus in front of it. What this means is x can equal 3 and x can equal minus 3. There's two solutions to this equation. Both of them are valid. Let's figure out why. If we take 3 and put it in here, we've got 3 squared, which is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. So that checks. If we take minus 3, negative 3, put it in here. Negative 3 squared. Again, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative times negative gives me a positive. 9 minus 9 is 0. So this solution checks. One thing you'll notice is in equations, when you have a, this is called a polynomial really, when you have um, x raised to some power, the highest exponent in your equation, in this case it's squared, is going to dictate the number of solutions that you're going to have. Here you've got a 2, that's the highest power, so you're going to have two solutions. If you had an equation, we're not going to learn how to do it in this section, but if you had an equation with a x cubed, you have three solutions. And all three of them, or all two of them in this case, will work. And you can see that because when you plug them in back into the top, they in fact do work. So let's try something a little bit different. What if we had 3x squared plus 9x equals 0? Notice again this equation has a x squared term that's the highest order of the, uh, the highest exponent here. So we're going to have two solutions we can expect. How do we do this? I could move the 9 over and all that, but really I'm, I want to get x by itself, and moving the 9x over isn't going to do anything. What I need to do is factor here. What's common between this term and this term? I've got a 3 here, and I've got, well it's 9, but I, I've got a 3 kind of wrapped up in here. So I'm going to factor a 3 out, and then here I've got an x squared and an x. x is common to both of those, so I can pull an x out. And then I need to, to make some parentheses and figure out what goes in the middle. What goes here is just simply x, because 3x times x gives me x squared. And then over here, all I need is a 3. 